Now this is my stone cutting theory in practice. Now we know that the Incas had counterweights. Now this counterweight is a can of paint, weighs about seven pounds. I have string going up to this brick. I don't know the brick's um, hardness or anything like that. It's not the point. We have a regular string, but it's not a cotton string. It's, it is nylon, but it is connected to a um, handle simulating, let's say, 10 incans. Now, if I were to pull up on this can, and the pressure that's on that can right there, okay? Now, what I want to show you is right down here, I have made a tiny, tiny little notch. And you can see it, let's see. I just want to let you see before and after. If this does not prove my theory at all, you won't see it on, um, on a, that I used a little, a tiny thing right here, and I cut just a little tiny notch. You can see a little pink notch right there, so that the string has a guide. Because remember, when they were cutting, they had to do it on. Um, they had to do it. They had to cut exactly where they wanted to. Now I'm thinking of something else here. Maybe I won't use WD-40. I'll use something else. Have a little heavier oil. But they probably used. They could use water, clay, whatever. Here we go. Here's a little bit of two-stroke oil. Now they didn't have any of that back then. But they probably. Here, let me, I'll just put some of this on. We'll see what we do. Now what I've done is I put a little bit of oil right here, a little tiny bit of oil on the on the cutting rope, as I'll call it. Now remember that they said that, that uh, vitrification happened on one edge and the other. It would take a lot of friction to do that or a laser beam. They didn't have a like a laser beam. Now I'm going to try this and I, with one hand and we'll see what we can do here. Now we have that in the gap. And then we pull up. Damn it. So, you know, this is why they needed a real heavy stone to do this. Let's see if I can do it like this. Put my giant Chuck Norris weight on it. Okay. It pull up like this. You can hear it. Okay. And they let it drop back down. And we pull up. And. The rope had a bit of a problem. Okay, but that's not the point. The rope did the rope did break. Okay. Now you see that? Let's see. That looks to me, this is where the notch was, you saw it before and after. But that looks to me like that notch is bigger. Now I'd probably have to use another type of rope. Remember, they had a they had special rope. We'll try something else here. I mean same effect. Let's why not? Let's experiment. We'll use the same notch. I think it's bigger myself. We'll see. Now we're gonna give this a try. I've switched out my fine finish ink and cutting rope with a larger fortress cutting rope. Remember they can make all sizes. What I've done here, I want you to, I want you to notice, if this doesn't work of course I won't put it on, but I've cut a notch, okay, a small notch, right here. Just enough to where I can get the rope to be a guide, right there. I want you to look at that very carefully. Okay, and we'll see if there's any uh, damage. I'm not going to use oil. I'm going to use good old-fashioned water. Okay. Now we've got a ten or uh, ten-pound weight, which is going to come up, and I'm going to be the Incans on the other side here. Okay. 
Now we'll take the water, we'll put a little water on there. Of course it's all experiment. That really helped having them. Then we then we're gonna take the rope here. Maybe the rope was and we're gonna pull oh damn, I'll put my, my knee right there. That's why the Inca stones are so big so they couldn't move. Okay. Where's that notch at? Right there. Come on. Damn it. Okay. I'm gonna let it down. It up. Okay. All right, let's try it here. Come on, lift it up. You can see the rope's fraying, right? But it has constant pressure. And of course, you have a bunch of Incan maidens right there. They're putting uh, they're putting water on it. Okay. see what happens. Now what we got there is we have a lot of rope fibers right there. Let's see what else we got. Let's see. Remember Thomas Edison did this about a billion times before he got any, anywhere. Let's see. Oh. It looks like it's starting to rub out, to cut. Now if you had, uh, say you had um, 10 incans on one side, and you had 10 incans on the other side, or you even just have a large car counterweight right there, and you had um, some other people pouring slurry into the um, cut clay or something to keep uh, the the heat down. You know, I think it could have worked, but that's why they couldn't do it with small rocks. See, because they moved. If you had a rock that weighed ten tons, you can give it all you got, and that rock isn't going to move. I don't have to put my knee up there and play with it. So I believe that our good old Incan buddies, well, this, this, this isn't a good Incan rope. This is a cheap one I got from China or something. That, but I think that they put the rope between the, um, the pieces and they cut like this. I believe they set their stones like that. So that's the end of my theory. And I'm, I'm going to post this even though it doesn't look that good. Now another thing I want to, I'd like to post here too is on a lot of the Incan walls they had stones with two divots in them. They also had some stones with just one. And what I believe these divots were for is not to put, it, put them in place. They were there so that the Incans could lift the stones back at 15 degrees while they cut behind them. And like I said, the, uh, where did I put that? oh, it's right here. This is your base right here. This is your front. Now if the Incans were to take their stone and tilt it at 15 degrees this way and start to cut, they would cut a lot right here. And then what they would do is they would cut till it was flush the front was flush with the back. Okay, so that stone is tilted at 15 degrees. It's not going to go anywhere. The more they cut, the lower it'll get, but it's not going to go backwards or forwards. Right? Because it's going to take 50% of everything. And I'm not sure if it would go down in the scallop hole or not, but the base will show. The bases or the top of the rocks will show how they were cut. And I believe they were cut with ropes some kind of rope rat tail cutters 
So this is Randy Hoffman signing off for Ripley's Believe It or Not.